you are looking at some beautiful cherry blossoms at the White House. This time of year, it's really the talk of the town. Thousands of visitors flock to D.C. every spring to see the cherry blossoms bloom along the National Mall and here at the Tidal Basin. The annual Cherry Blossom Festival is just part of the remarkable history of this place that saw the first plantings of the cherry blossoms with First Lady Helen Taft back in 1912. As you probably know, they were a gift from Japan. Joining us now is the one and only First Lady's man and author of The Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Andy Oak, obviously a huge friend of the show as well. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. My first question for you is, this was not the landscape in 1912. It wasn't quite this beautiful. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, Washington, D.C. was essentially built on a swamp. And back when Helen Taft first had the idea to, to give the area a facelift and make it, a, make it a, an attraction for people to come and hang out, there was a dirt roadway that went by. Now keep in mind, Harry Ford, uh, Henry Ford made his t uh, Model T in 1908. So this would have been a bustling sort of, you know, uh, uh, traffic area for, for, the, for the new capital. And, and so uh, she decided that she was influenced by the riverfront parks that she saw when she and her husband were in Asia and in the Philippines. And that's when she decided to bring the cherry blossoms in. Any of the original trees still here? And, and how, you know, when they, when they first arrived back in 1912, you know, give me a little history. How sure. Many okay. Came. Well, the, the, the first batch was sent over in 1910, and it okay. was, and they were larger than they thought. They were very surprised when they unwrapped them, but even more surprised to find out that they were bug infested. So the <laughs> Secretary of the Interior and President Taft ordered them to be burned, and they took them right out on the on the National Mall and made these giant cherry blossom bonfires, essentially, and burned them to get rid of the bugs. Well, the Japanese were very embarrassed, and they sent more, like 3,000 some trees in 1912 when they were planted, and some of the original ones are right over behind us across the river in sight of the Washington Monument. They're very gnarled, they're curled, and they branch out over the water, almost reaching towards the water. But some of the originals are still around. What a feat to bring them over. Give us a little history on, on how that was done. They came over on the West Coast, obviously. Sure. Transported here. It wasn't a small... No, no, not at all. And the, the very interesting thing was Mrs. Taft was originally going to get them from a nursery in Pennsylvania. But then the Japanese found out about it. They're like, no, 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 you're, get, you're getting them from us. You're getting real cherry blossom trees. And that's when they sent over the first batch that didn't work out. But the second batch came in. Mrs. Taft, First Lady Taft, and the Japanese Prime Minister wife planted the first two over there by the Washington Monument. Ended up being a huge hit. There's uh, The National Park Service told us that upwards of a million and a half yeah. people will come. So it's now become really rich with tradition. Can you tell us a little bit about the symbolism? Because it's it's... Um, you know, they bloom. It's about between four and seven days, but there's uh, some, some symbolism there, especially when it comes to Japanese heritage. Yeah, and, and a lot of that goes back when, when the Americans helped the Japanese in the Japanese-Russo War. Uh, Japanese uh, artifacts, Japanese decor, I mean, it was all the rage at the turn of the century. Everyone was into it. So bringing this into the homes and bringing it in artwork and screens and paintings and things, it made natural sense for her to want to do this around the Tidal Basin and really give a facelift to the whole area and bring people in. The amazing thing about this, as you mentioned, millions of people come here to see this and they don't think of Helen Taft. They don't even think of Helen Taft if you're naming 5, 10, 20 first ladies. She's also the first lady to donate the first dress, the first inaugural gown to the Smithsonian. So all these things that we think about with D.C. and first ladies, all from a first lady that we don't really think about when we think about first ladies. All right, beautiful. And look, at we're, we're here today to honor her, her rich and tradition. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Andy Oak. That's Thank beautiful. You. Really quickly, can people can, can people learn more from your book? Sure, absolutely. There's a big chapter on Helen Taft, volume one. You can get it on firstladiesman.com. All the stuff's there, videos. We'll put this video up later today. And beautiful. it's always a blast to be here with you. Thank you, Andy. We appreciate it. Very interesting. Thank you so much.